Welcome along to LS11 Extra Opposition View. It's an FA Cup special, of course, brought to you by our friends at skinnyboos.co.uk, the home of reduced calorie alcohol, full strength, full flavour and fewer calories. And of course, if you enter the code LS11 on uh, checkout, you will get free delivery, which is obviously fantastic. Look out for some more amazing offers for them coming up with LS11 very shortly. It's FA Cup, uh, third round uh, against Crawley. And uh, we're going to be chatting to the uh, head of community sport from JPI Media, and that's Mark Dunford. Morning, Mark. How are you? I'm very good, thanks, Darren. How are you? Yes, very good. Thank you very much for spending some time with us. And you, you cover for for a number of titles. You'd cover the community sport, but Crawley is one of those uh, one of those big teams that you cover down in in Sussex. That's right. Yeah, um, I actually live about five minutes from the ground. I can see it from my um, office window. Um, and I've, I've covered them from since about 2004, I think it is, um, on and off. Um, but this year, I've, I've got more of a focus on them, and they are doing pretty well. So um, it's a very exciting big weekend, and who knows, shock, shock on the cards, I think. <laughs> oh, all right, OK, we're yeah, going to get to it. already, yeah. <laughs> um, so, just in, uh, are you a Crawley fan yourself, or have you vicariously become a Crawley fan while you're covering them? Yeah, yeah, but that the latter. Um, I'm an Oxford United fan at heart. My family all come from Oxford, so that's the team I support. But um, yeah, no, but I, I mean, yeah, since I moved here, I've, I've always been one of those people that when you're in a move to a different town, go and watch the local football club. So, yeah, I, uh, yes, they hold a special place in my heart, Crawley, at the moment. So, um, yeah, no, um, they're, they're they're a good club. Yeah, excellent. Um, and let, let's talk, just talk about how they're coming into uh, this game. You, you mentioned it there. They're they're playing pretty well down in League Two. I do the pitch announcing uh, for, for Bradford City, so I've not seen them uh, up there just yet. I think they're there in a couple of weeks' time, I think. Um, uh, but uh, I'm intrigued on how they've gone in, in League Two. Uh, what, what have your thoughts been? Yeah, they've played some pretty impressive stuff. Um, they, at the beginning of the season, they couldn't get beaten at home but couldn't win away and now it's gone the other way a little bit they the results at home they got some good draws but um just before the previous round in the FA Cup when they beat AFC Wimbledon they lost two at home on the trot and that was their first two home defeats in um in over a year I think or they were about three days away from having a completely unbeaten year at home but um since then they haven't lost in nine games and they play some really good stuff they are going forward they are they are good to watch um, defensively, they've got some work to do. They kept their first clean sheet in about 10 games, I think, um, at the weekend against Bolton when they won 1-0 there. So, um, But they play some good football. And I think I, I saw a quote from John Yen's, um the other day saying that he, his, he likes his sides to play good, honest football. And I think that's a good summing up of it. They, they play football the way it should be played. Yeah, because I mean, League Two is is pretty wide open at the the top there. They're they're not far off uh, the top, are they? Really, only a couple of wins away uh, for, from being up there, really. So it's 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 pretty wide open up the top of that League Two. It is absolutely, and um, in recent weeks they've um they drew with Newport, who were top, and they beat Forest Green away, and they obviously beat Bolton, they beat Leighton Orr in away. So they've got some pretty sort of landmark results in the last few weeks, and then yeah. fantastic for them. They played. I think it was what was it six games, one four drawn two. So they're they're in incredible form, and um, he's uh, John Yem said to me the other day, if they carry on with this, they'll get promoted. It's as simple as that. So yeah, yeah. No, they're they're, what, they're, they're, they're side. What about John Yem's uh, as a manager? John Yem's against Marcelo Bielsa. I mean, uh, everybody pundits seem to wax lyrical about Marcelo Bielsa and the, and the type of uh, football he plays. Uh, how would do you think John Yem is going to set up his Crawley team? Well, I, think um, you know, I don't think he's going to sit back and just hope that they can keep it a clean sheet for like 90, 70 minutes and then try and hit them on the break. I think he will go for it. Um, they've got nothing to lose. He called it a free punch the other day. Um, he, he was set up, I mean, in the last few weeks, he's, he, saw, he, he is someone who tinkers with formations, John, and it's taken him a while to get there. But in the last um, four games, he's played two different formations, a 5-3-2 and a 4-1-2-1-2. So... Um, it's interesting, but with the four one two one two, it turns into a four three three very quickly. And um, with Max Waters, obviously everybody knows about Max Waters. He's had so much publicity recently, so much speculation about him. Tom Nichols is in great form, and Ashley Addison as well. If those three, if those three have really clicked, 
And if they um, if they are on form on Sunday, they will be a handful for the Leeds defence, I think. But um, yeah, he's certainly not going to sit back. I don't think it will be it will be an open game. I'm expecting goals. Yeah, I, th- I think Leeds fans are always quite fearful about a lower league team um, because there's been some uh, very, very famous uh, Leeds losses in, in the past. It, well, I think uh, Sutton, Histon, of course, that nearly, I think, realistically put pay to uh, Gary McAllister's uh, reign. Uh, maybe it had been a week or so after that. But um, so, you know, there, there's form. I think, for, for Leeds to sort of not turn up on, on these days. So uh, Crawley have got to feel quite energised about this, I would think. I think so. And um, Ashley Addison said earlier in the week that um, Leeds need to be wary of them. I mean, I know Leeds are probably going to put out a younger side, um, but I don't think Crawley will take that for granted. They will take the game seriously, and I think Leeds will take the game seriously. But... I mean, like I said at the beginning of the, um, this talk, I think there is a shock on the cards. I think they are, truly are the form team in League Two um, and one of the form teams in the country, I think. So uh, it will be very interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, Crawley haven't had a great record in the FA Cup in recent years. Though. I mean, obviously 2011, they got to the fifth round where they played at Old Trafford, lost 1-0. A year later, they got to the fifth round again, lost to Stoke when they were a Premier League side. But um, since then, it's been first and second round knockouts but I think yeah John Yems is a manager who takes every game seriously he's not I mean obviously the EFL trophy ignore that Um, but uh, yeah the FA Cup I think is yes exactly yeah Um, but um, yeah John Yems um, a word people always use when I talk to people about John Yems is he's old school he loves the FA Cup he wants to do well in it He's a, and um, who was it the other day? I think it was Ian Holloway said the other day, he's, he's a proper footballing man, John Yems. He, he knows what he's doing. So um, I think, yeah, I think, I think they'll do well on Sunday. Or they, they will certainly not let themselves down. Yeah, it's, a, it's going to be an interesting one. And like you said there, the form going into it, their form is fantastic. They've uh, uh, not lost in six words. One, four, drawn two, uh, and haven't lost one in the last set. So they are absolutely firing on all cylinders at the moment. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I mean, it would like I said, it was the two home games they lost on the trot to Carlisle and Grimsby, which were, um, Carlisle wasn't a huge shock, but Grimsby's result was a bit poor. But then mm. the next, very next game was the AFC Wimbledon game in the FA Cup. They won that, and since then they haven't looked back. They've, um, yeah, been on top form. And yeah, the, I, don't, I don't think there's any team that would be relish going to Crawley Town at this moment in time. No, no, I can imagine not. Um, uh, you mentioned some of those players uh, earlier on. Everybody talking about sort of Max Waters. 13 goals uh, so far this season. Um, are they going to struggle to keep hold of him, do you think? I think they will. Um, I did ask John Yems on Tuesday about it and I said, um, what's happening with Max? Because he hasn't played the last two games through injury, obviously. Um, obviously, when somebody doesn't play and that, when there's a lot of transfer speculation, you start to think. So I asked him, bluntly what's happening with Max is he going and he said all I'm thinking about is Leeds United and that's all he said so um, I don't I think they will struggle to hold on I think I, I'm confident they will keep hold of him in this transfer window but when it comes to the summer um, I think he yeah he'll be on his way there's I mean Crawley have had history of um, people like James Collins uh, Colin Hearn Grant although he wasn't a Crawley player he was on loan he made his name at Crawley, he scored 10 goals in 10 games, I think, there. Yeah, James Collin obviously got a move to Luton when he was on a hot run. Crawley are a team that get players in and then sell them on. Um, so, I, I think, yeah, I think they will hope to keep him for the rest of the season and get that price up as much as they can. Uh, it's interesting because obviously you know he's been the, the the shining light, but like you said uh, a little bit earlier as well, uh, that there's goals right the way throughout their team, isn't there? With Nichols, Frankham, and even sort of Frost and Tunnicliffe always chop, chipping in with a couple as well. So that there's there's goals all all the way through that team. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, that Tom Dallison, who uh, he didn't start the season very well. He played last season very good um, in defence, but he's capable of being um, a bit of trouble up front um, in corners and set pieces. But, I mean, George Frankham has been a little bit of a revelation this year, goal scoring. Um, Captain plays at the base of centre midfield and he scored a couple of worldies this year as well. And he scored the winner against Bolton on uh, Saturday, just gone. But, um, yeah, it's it's Tom Nichols, Dadison and Waters up front. They are, yeah, they have really clicked and 
I haven't seen a strike pair at Crawley Click like that since um, Matt Tubbs and Tyrone Barnett in the uh, in those days under Steve Evans. So, uh, sorry, my my bug just kind of said. Um, so yeah, no, it's uh, they they have got yeah they've got goals throughout the team. Um, so yeah, they they will cause a lot of problems I think for Leeds on Sunday. Of course, a, a bit of a Leeds link, isn't there? Really, you mentioned his name there, Steve Evans. And Steve Evans uh, uh, obviously was quite critical about Marcelo Bielsa. Didn't think he should be getting the job. It should be going to someone, a proper football man like Mick McCarthy or someone. Um, do, do, do Crawley sort of miss <laughs> Steve? A bit of a character, wasn't they? Uh, yeah, I think they did. I think they look back at, uh, fondly at the Steve Evans years, obviously, because of the success. I mean, he, as you know, he's quite a character and can be quite a divisive character. But the fans, the fans look very fondly back at those times under Steve Evans because he... He took them places they never thought they would get. Um, but it's not just Steve Evans. We've got the Harry Kuehl link, obviously. Harry's reign wasn't quite as successful as Steve Evans down at Crawley. Um, and we've got... Um, and there's a couple of players as well. I think it was Dominic Polion who started at Leeds and Sanchez Watt, who I don't know how often they played. But there's a few little links here and there between Leeds and Crawley. Not a team that you would... Two teams you would expect to have much in common. But... Um, there are those things there, but Steve Evans, yeah, he's he is a legend down here in Crawley for what he achieved with the club. Harry Kill is the player who must not be named, uh, I think. For, for well, yeah, <laughs> for, I, I realise as, as I said his name, I realise. Oh God, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let's get let's get a, a score prediction then. Uh, what do you think? You're you're predicting an upset. So, uh, what what score do you think it'll be? Um, my heart says um, it will be at least a score draw and go into extra time with Crawley nicking it. Um, but I think my head will be... Crawley... I think Crawley will score at least two goals. But it's the, it's the defence, how the defence holds. So, yeah, there will be goals in it. But I'm going to go for a Crawley win. I'm going to say 3-2 after extra time. Okay, three two after extra time. Okay, uh, I think on the main podcast, I'm I'm invariably very bad at score predictions, and I think I put this one at sixteen nil to Leeds. Um, so uh, uh, overs on the goal, <laughs> like, overs on the goal. Yeah. So who, who knows? Who knows? It could happen. It could happen. Oh, uh, yeah, I was sorry. Talking, I'm sorry. I was talking to um, one of my colleagues who's based down in Chichester. He's a big Portsmouth fan, but he always does score predictions with Portsmouth and Crawley. And he said he thinks Crawley will take the lead, but then it might be second half leads overrun them and it could be four or five one to leads. But yeah, I don't think it will be as I don't think there will be that big a gap in the scoreline. So. No, probably it's probably not sixteen now, but uh, uh, there you go. You live in hope sometimes. You've got to be positive. That's right. Yeah. Uh, well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, this one's on. It's on BBC. This one is it? I think, isn't it? Yeah, one one thing kick off BBC One is the big live game. So brilliant! Yeah, All right. the, the scaffolding's already up at the People's Convention Stadium. We're ready for TV cameras and that. So. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I love the FA Cup. Even though a lot of people are saying, you know, should the FA Cup be continuing because of, you know, what's been happening with, with COVID, I think that the more football, the better. I don't know about you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. Yeah, it's great to have some football to cover as a local journalist because it's been quite trying the last year, just generating stories and that. There is a lot around, but it's, um, it's always better when there's actually sport happening. So, um, yeah, and um, but it's the only big shame is that the fans can't be there to see Crawley's biggest ever home game. So it's as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah, that is the, the real disappointment. Uh, and uh, uh, Well, we wish you well, apart from Sunday. Um, and uh, let, let's see what happens. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on LS11 Extra. Mark Dunford, who's the uh, head of community sport at JPI Media, mainly covering uh, Crawley uh, as well down there in Sussex. So uh, thanks very much for your time uh, today, Mark, and uh, wish you well for, for lockdown. <laughs>